speaking on behalf of Red Hat, and we're going to talk about Avocado, which is a, an open source testing framework. So briefly, we're going to talk about what Avocado really is, get a little bit more into detail about it, take a look at its architecture, features, uh, do a quite extensive demo on the features, and take a look at the roadmap we're planning for it. So uh, first of all, a little bit of our team. So as most of you know, we are on the virtualization team at Red Hat. Uh, we've been developing test tools for like the Vert stack, mainly KVM and Levert. Uh, we have maintained auto test and Vert test for a while now. And it's been like um, two years ago, one year and a half that we have like started working on this new project, leveraging all the experience that we got on this, this previous projects. And what we are going to demo here, it's based on all that, that experience that we got it uh, all this time. So Avocado is a set of tools and libraries to perform automated testing on Unix platforms. Uh, the, one of the big goals here is to actually try to get developers and QE together. So we, what we saw for a long time is that tools that were uh, quite well suited for QE were not that handy for developers. And the flow of information and, and, and contribution wasn't ideal. So that's one of the main goals of Avocado. We know that QE and development actually have different uh, approaches towards testing. So QE actually tries really, really, really hard to crash and burn the software and their, their motto is probably something like, we have to crash it, if we don't crash it, we may be missing something. And developers are, by definition, uh, Larry Wall used to say that, they're more like relaxed, uh, actually he used to say lazy, and we actually trust the code that we write. And that's one of the big differences between approaches of the, the how, how the two teams, uh, how the two groups actually see uh, software testing. Uh, but in the end, uh, testing is necessary for both. And we actually want to have the same tools, the same information actually flowing uh, between both. So Avocado is a new test toolbox. It's tools and libraries. We understand that testing shouldn't really get in your way. It should help you. It should be a tool and not really require you to do a lot of stuff to get like tests run and results uh, recorded. So Avocado is initially a test runner, a simple tool that you can add more feature to it uh, in the form of plugins. We tried for, uh, for Avocado to not restrict uh, what kind of language or technology you can use to actually develop your tests. So you're free to use any kind of language whatsoever, but of course you get benefits if we use the library part of Avocado to actually get your tests uh, written and run. And one key point here, as we said in a couple of other ways before, is that the same tool that's supposed to be run on the developer's laptop is the same tool that's supposed to run on the grid. So the same kind of output, the same kind of experience, the same kind of test results. So Avocado for users, so that's a general overview of the architecture. Uh, here we have a user that's interacting with the test runner. As I mentioned before, the test runner is extensible by means of plugins. Every single job that it's run actually has a unique shell one, and the goal here is to have unique jobs, so unique results, results that we can merge, that we can import, export, and we can actually uh, compare in a centralized fashion. So every single job can actually output results to different formats. And we have like built-in formats that are machinable readable like JSON and XUnit. Uh, and we have human readable formats like HTML and the, 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 the console output. And we can either even send that those results to a centralized result server. So Avocado for the test writer. Of course, you're going to write your test that's going to be run by the previous big block here that is the test runner. And 
you're actually writing this test to actually uh, play with a given application or, or a set of applications, a, a stack or something like that. So by writing a test, you have a couple of options. You can go with simple tests, and simple tests are simple tests <laughs> that actually return zero for, their, for success and non-zero for failure. It's a very, very simple uh, agreement between Avocado and, and simple tests. Or you can go the other route and actually use the API that Avocado provides. You would have to conform to the API, but you get a lot more out of it. And a lot more out of it uh, could mean that you get to use features like GDB to actually poke into the program that you're testing, uh, wrappers to get any execution of these programs uh, that you're testing with different uh, uh, programs, say perf, say any kind of uh, uh, intermediary program that you want to have your program run under. So. This is a general overview of what Avocado is for test writers. So one of the things that we have learned in the past, and we've seen that the, the, the whole uh, testing test, uh, test two box actually requires, it's a way to describe these large matrices of tests. Uh, in virtualization itself, we actually get to deal with so many variations of so many different items we could briefly say we have so many disk formats, we have so many NICs, uh, NIC types, we have many guests and host OSs, and at the end, we probably want to test as much as it makes sense. And what we had in the past in auto tests in the form of the Cartesian config file was something that helped us a lot. QE gets a lot out of it. Uh, but we, we believe we could go a little bit further and actually uh, improve on that. So the multiplexer is a way to create those large test matrices. It is YAML based. It is very, very easy to describe. And it ex it's actually kind of powerful because you can, within uh, the, the, the YAML file, which has a tree representation at the end, you can actually limit the scope and actually filter parts that don't make sense. So. Uh, let's suppose things like Vertio SCSI doesn't make sense with a given OS guest. You know how in where in the tree one thing is, where in the tree the other thing is, and you can actually say that this thing actually doesn't go with the other. So it's a very easy way to actually express those matrices. Uh, this is a very simple uh, and kind of real world lunch example uh, for the multiplexer on the left. On the right-hand side, your left-hand side, we have a list of bread, topping, and filling with two choices for each. And at the end, we have what the multiplexer generates. So you have every single possible kind of sandwich that you can make out of those ingredients. And this is, a, again, a very, very simple example. Uh, a more complex and close to the real world example is uh, actually something like this. It actually, I'm not sure if it's readable, um, but this actually shows a, uh, a virtualization testing like example. So we have a 73 line YAML file that describes two different environments production and debug. It has like two different kernel configurations uh, and a couple of guest OSs at the end. This, this column on the middle is a tree representation of what we define in the YAML file, and it actually generates uh, 1,400,000 variants plus. So it's a really concise way of describing and actually visualizing and actually generating all the test matrix that you probably want to test. So uh, without taking too long, let's get to the more interesting part, which is actually getting uh, Avocado uh, working. Um, since we are at KVM Forum, uh, we thought about a kind of close to real world scenario. And um, let's, let's imagine that we're working on a QMU feature that actually uh, touches three different targets. Let's say x86-64, uh, i686, the 32-bit Intel, and ARM. So if, you, if you're working on your uh, source QMU, like I hold my code, 
and you're working on a feature that touches these three architectures, these three targets, you probably want to make sure that your code, first of all, it builds. So what a developer would probably do, what I would do initially, would be to write something like unu.build sh, which is a very, very simple shell script. It has a source there where I want to build from, uh, the branch that I, will to be, I want to build from, if I want to get the latest code or not, any targets that I'm working on, like I said before. So I optionally pull from the latest, uh, from, from my origin, and I go for each one of the targets I run, configure, and make. So this should actually get me uh, the three architectures, the three targets built that I'm working on. And if something goes wrong, then I'll probably notice it. And Avocado was actually designed to run any kind of executable, including shell scripts, including um, binaries written and compiled and out of any language whatsoever. So what we could do with this shell script, which I'm not going to do because we don't want to wait all that time, is to actually run anything. And running anything means running, say, slash bin slash true. What Avocado does here it's to actually run this binary, identifies that it returned a zero, re uh, a zero status code, and actually considers the test as a success, so the test passed. If the same, if another binary has a test that it's just similar to it and executable, actually returns something different than that, then we have a failure. So the shell script, if it returned any error code that was different from zero, would get a failure. So uh, you may be thinking, all right, I could run the shell script by, by myself, so why would I actually want to wrap everything in Avocado? And what we believe here is that actually running tests, if you consider your build test a test, uh, without actually a tool to actually help you out, it's probably something like writing code without version control. You run a test and you know at that time what you're doing, you know the results at that very time, but when you clear up the screen, you forgot about everything. So by running Avocado, what you get here is persistence of results. So even the simple build test like this can actually help you uh, a lot. So these last uh, simple job runs that I run, they actually populated Avocado job results. And we have three jobs that were run and we have a pointer to the latest one. And if I run another one and ask for a browser, I'll get a browser with the results. And these results are persisted. Uh, as I said before, they include human readable results and they also include machinable readable results. And with machinable readable results, we have a couple of options we can output say to X unit. I'm asking it to actually output that on the command line, on the, on the standard output. And I could ask for uh, other formats to actually go to in the same direction. So uh, the, the, the main thing here about using Avocado is that you get persistent of result. You could probably ask a month from now if uh, a month ago that given commit actually compile on your system on a given version of GCC. Because one of the things that you get for free with Avocado is the system information collection. So uh, this, is, this is all collected for free. It's a configurable system. So you have a predefined set of information. So this is c the CPU info uh, taken out of proc. You have uh, the BF command, the message, and a whole bunch of them. As I said before, this is actually configurable. You can go to Avocado, Sysinfo, and if you want to collect another command, you just drop a line here. If you want to collect another file, you just drop a line here, and there you have it. You don't have to do anything else to actually have that recorded in your history. So uh, having said a little bit about what running any kind of binary inside Avocado, any kind of executable inside Avocado actually gets you. Uh, let's see what the library part of Avocado actually helps you to do. 
So instead of the QMU build shell script that I briefly showed you before, let's try to do an avocado version of that. So we have avocado version as QMU build.py and let's go briefly to this code. So the code is intended to be simple. Uh, an avocado test is mainly defined by a test, uh, uh, actually a, a Python class that actually inherits from the avocado test class. So this is what you import from the avocado namespace. You define a class, and this class can actually have one or many tests. One thing that it's worth noticing is that you actually get to use all the background uh, if you're used to write, to write Python unit tests. This is not actually like Python unit tests, but it's also compatible with Python unit tests. So you could have Python unit tests, runners run avocado tests, and avocado running Python unit tests. So we have compatibility there. So we have a setup method here, which does a little bit of getting parameters, uh, and these parameters will either get uh, come from default sources or from the multiplexer. And the real action here on the setup, just like on the shell script, is actually to do a git checkout uh, on the right branch and optionally do a git pull. So pretty simple stuff. The test itself is this method here. Let me try to get everything on the screen. Uh, we have a decorator, which means uh, it's named fail on, and what it means is that you, if you actually get errors on your test on this specific way that we are describing without any parameters, these failures, these errors inside the test are actually going to be translated as failures. So uh, if you want to say that if anything happens, any, anything bad happens within your test, you want to get a failure and not a test error, that's how you do it. So here we have the method, the method itself, the test method itself. Uh, these bunch of lines are actually related to getting parameters that I said before, either from the faults or from the multiplexer. And the real action is also really simple and like quite comparable to the shell script version we saw before. So we create a build directory if it doesn't exist before. We run configure with the right parameters right here and then we do a make, and additionally to what we were doing inside the shell script, we also run the generated binary. So this is our test. It is quite simple, and it actually helps us to go a little bit further than the first version. So let's just think that right now we have decided that we have a plan, and this plan is to actually have um, two different build types, we want to build this as a release build and as a debug build. We want to do some heavy performance testing on the release build. And we also want to do to have the debug versions uh, for obvious reasons because we want to debug them. And for targets, as we had before, we want to have this compiled for x86-64, for i686, oh, that's an extra, and for ARM. So that's our current plan. That's what we want to do. That's how we want to build QMU. And what we can do here is to actually express this as a YAML file for the multiplexer. So QMU build.yaml, it's actually similar to what we've done. So we have two build types, which is release and debug, and we have two target, three targets, which are x86-64, i386, and ARM. Out of this YAML file, what we can see with avocado let's actually take a look at the tree version that we got from here so build type and targets this is actually really similar to what we were planning to do so we kind of achieved what we were planning and we can take a look at what each part of the tree actually contains so so for build type release we are actually using ccache to speed up the build and for the bug we're actually doing enable debug. And for the targets, we have uh, the individual target names. So if we want to see what actually comes out of this, we have six variants. So six variants generated with everything that we plan. So what can we do here? We can run the QMU build test and just say that we want to multiplex that using QMU build.yaml. 
What we get out of this is six tests. Uh, let's just stay you in the latest avocado log and see what's going on. So it's now on the second build. So I'm using Ccash. There was a previous build, so things should be like really, really uh, fast. So we have the first three release builds almost done, and we actually heading now to the the bug builds. So you can see briefly here. Oh, it's gone. An enable debug. So these are the debug builds that are actually being built. So this is how you can get a simple test, a very simple test written in uh, the Avocado API to actually uh, increase your coverage of testing. So uh, this is one thing. So Avocado was able to run what we call simple tests, ju te just tests that return either zero or non-zero as result values and we were able to run native tests with multiplexer to increase the scope of coverage. But we also know that uh, in most software projects, test actually spurs out of the creativity of developers. So, uh, and actually to suit the necessity, the needs of the project itself. And that is kind of true uh, in virtually every project and very, very true in QMU. So if we take a look, a briefly look at what QMU has to offer in the test directory alone, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So let's take a look, for instance, at QMUIA tests. These guys are kind of funny. They're really interesting. And we have here a bunch of tests that actually look like shell scripts. Let's take a look at 001. Uh, it is shell-based, but it actually d has a, a some, some extra requirements. So you cannot run 001 or 2 or 121 or 135, any of those tests by themselves, but you actually have to use check to run them. And the extra thing is that check, it doesn't, it doesn't, it cannot run from the source directory. So it needs to be run from the build directory. So here's our QMU tree. Here is the build directory that our test actually created. Here we see that it created the bug and release versions for each of the targets that we were talking about. And now we want to run, let's say, the release version of x86-64. Uh, let's get to QM QMUIO tests from there. And now we have check here. And check can actually run and pass on this, on this, on this one example here. And that actually gets us back to the first example, which was the shell version of the, 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 QI, the, the QMU build test, which is, okay, that's nice, it runs, but I'll, I'll forget about it. Once I clean the screen, it's gone. I'm not sure what I used, where I was, but well, I remember, I vaguely remember that test. So what we want here is to actually help you guys to concentrate all the test results and we want Avocado to be able to actually run those tests and persist the result, these results so they can actually be kept, exchanged, looked up in the future, uh, merged to a central database server, and so on. So what we can do here is ask Avocado, let's get back to Avocado, and say, Avocado, please run test 001, 002, and 003. But to run this thing, you actually need an extra tool, and we call this thing inner runner. So check is the actually guy is the actual guy that's going to run the, th the test. So this inner runner is located in QMU build. Uh, let's take the release version x86-64 test QMU IO test check. In this runner, it actually needs to be run from their its own directory. So we are going to actually change the directory to where check is because that's the only way check actually works. And we're going to run tests one, two, and three. And when we do this, it actually runs them. We can take a look at the job results here. Mm, let's take a look in the HTML format. And we have tests one, two, and three. We can take a look at what happened. Let's take a look at the bug log. Oh, come on. You want to open Emacs for that. Okay, but anyway, the result is collected and 
we had three passes. So everything, the human readable resort, the results, the machine readable results, they're all there, just like uh, very, very simple tests. Uh, any questions so far before we move a little bit further? The names, because the names can get really, really long, and there is no magical way yet of actually naming them. Yeah, we discussed a lot about that, and uh, we, we didn't get to an agreement of the best way to represent the variant. Well, actually, the, the agreement is that we would only print with variant one, variant two, because uh, it's not really clear what the best behavior should be, so we would go with that. Yeah. At the very, at the very least, you get to actually see the variant ex uh, uh, expansion on the logs, so you know which variant number actually means. You know, so you would get something like avocado, multiplex, and the reason I ask is that usually what I have is I run uh, tests like validation tests, but I'm not sure much with and it's totally a great idea. So mm -hmm. why? Uh -huh. So I have like a window in the background that every now and then I can switch to where I need to start the variant to be in a certain place. Uh -huh. So it's we know to have and it is and it do not have an extra step. I know. Get the logs and put I know. I know. We know that this is a current kind of uh, limitation that we have, but uh, like we said, we didn't reach an agreement on how to name them. So this is the current state of things, but we, we do it want to. Be perfect. I mean, it doesn't have to uneasily identify the variants. It has to be something that the user you can relate to. Because the user knows what variant roughly what you are having. Mm -hmm. So for me, even just knowing that it's a Windows window and not a RAS window is already different. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what? Yeah. And we are. I just like to have something that I can see. I know. And we, we have actually discussed uh, uh, some options. One of them is actually to be able to name them like magically, or if the user can somehow tag how he wants the variant to be named. I'm a spare boss that prints the usage. Uh, yeah. Because I mean, I'm a human, so I can spot the W for Windows and the Mac. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something we would be working on. So it's a known, it's a known uh, yeah, it's limitation. Minus, minus would be more than minus minus. Uh -huh. And have all like the complete path. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. So uh, having run a QMU IO test out of the QMU build tree that we have just compiled, uh, let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's take a look at a simple QMU uh, based test, a QMU IMG based test, and see how it, how, how Avocado can help with that. So this is another example of a very simple test. It still uses the same uh, test class from the Avocado namespace and still uses the same fail one. It just goes into a little bit more detail about the, where it, it should actually consider a, a, a test error a failure. So if any of process run actually raises command error, this is actually going to be considered a test failure. If anything else happens, like any other exceptions raised, it's going to be considered a test error. So Avocado wants you to be assertive on what you're testing and be precise and be able to tell that something was a failure from the program that you're actually testing or no, it could be something that actually uh, it's broken on your test or in your test infrastructure or something like that. So. Here we have the test method itself. It actually refers to two images, 
two resources that the test used. And these are good QCAL and bad QCAL. So we have two images and two ways to fail. So the first way to fail, just uh, saying it again, is if process run fails, uh, it's going to raise command error and it's going to result in the test failure. The other way is to be really assertive, just like Python unit test does, this actually comes from the unit test class and says that I want this to actually raise an exception. So bad should raise this command error exception. If it doesn't do this, it's a failure. So let's try to run this. Avocado run QMUIMG. And oh well, it passed, no major surprises. But one nice thing about actually having Avocado relate to the resources that you actually use during a test is that Avocado can do things like running tests on remote machines. And by knowing that kind of thing, let me fire up the machine that I need. Oh, it's already running. So by knowing that kind of stuff, I can do Avocado run QMUIMG dot py, I want to run this on a domain called KVM Forum Fedora 22, and the VM host name is KVM Forum Fedora 22 local. And when I do this, it's actually being run on the remote system. Yeah. And we can take a look at the logs, see what actually happened. So you see there is a canonical name here that is different from the origin because the test was actually copied over to the other machine. So it actually expands on the full local path plus, plus the path that it was located on. Uh, and we can actually take a look at the sys information that was collected there. I want to prove that I'm not cheating. So let's take a look. Oh, host name is KVM Forum Fedora 22. We can take a look, say, the command line. I'm running a different kernel here. So yes, it run on the other place. And things can go a little bit more interesting. Let's imagine that you're running tests that are kind of dangerous. So let's say we want to run them as root and a VM is probably the best place to do that. And if everything is set up properly, this will actually run as root on a VM. But it can also damage the VM. So why don't we do... Yeah. yeah. So... Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And um, it's on a libvirt defined VM that has Avocado pre-installed and it has either SSH key or it's going to ask you for a password. Okay, so I have to set up Avocado and SSH keys on each VM where I want to. Yes. Uh, where I want to run the test. So yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does Avocado take care of like setting up your VM if it's not running? It does. It actually does. I could actually shut down the VM here. So let's do this. Uh, system shutdown KVM forum Fedora 22. What we actually did not actually come to, kind of come to an agreement, is that actually sometimes uh, a VM can actually take longer or more time to boot. We have a very short timeout here. So if I do this, it's probably going to fail the first time. Yes, it did, because the machine is booting. Let's see the second time. Yeah, so now it's running. Uh, the timeout, it's actually now uh, currently hard-coded, but it would be like pretty trivial to actually make it out, you know. Uh-huh. We can actually ping the port and things like that, but they are they, they are configurable as well. I mean, this is a feature that can like em, like everything in Avocado can get the nice little touches in it. But would you surprise how hard it is? Does it require virtual machines to have, for example, the Kubernetes installed? No, it doesn't. It's so yeah, yeah, and this feature actually uh, it 
it actually is, uh, came from uh, a feature that is remote host. So you could have something that is not KVM forum, Fedora 22, remote user, and oh, machine domain. So it could be any kind of machine. It doesn't need to be a virtual machine. It can be a remote machine. So that's why we kind of, since we inherited the functionality from the other one, we don't know if that machine actually needs to boot up or is it running, is it not? So we had a shorter timeout but it's easy to actually make it configurable. Yeah, so like, so like I was saying, suppose you're running, have a question maybe? Yes, I have a question uh, when it comes to the virtual machines. Uh, you have thought about importing cloud images. Yes, so yes. Because it would be an easy way to yes. get the sure. package into the virtual machine and more or less auto auto sure. Sure, that is planned. We want to be really, really flexible on, on what Avocado can run as a test and where it can actually run it, so. For that call, uh, uh, in February, Lucas wrote a Docker plugin, but we, we never committed it to the main repo, uh, but it's trivial to write a Docker, uh, Docker plugin to do that sort of stuff. So in case you guys missed it, uh, it's actually quite easy. In the first slides, I, I, I show that Avocado is actually this kind of small test runner that is actually pluggable. If we take a look here at Avocado plugins, we get a sense of that. So these are the features. They look kind of core, but they actually implemented as plugins. So uh, the VM, the run, on, the run test on a virtual machine is a plugin. The run remote is another plugin. So running uh, something on Docker, on a cloud image, or things like that could be done. Lukash actually wrote a Docker plugin. We didn't actually commit it uh, that, but it could be done. So getting back to the virtual example, let's say we have to we we have something kind of dangerous running as a test. Let's let's you know what? Let's make it dangerous. So let's do something like open, since I know this is a VDA, and I want to write some garbage to it, okay? So let's run this and say VM, please clean up after you run it, and you're running as root. So what happens here is that the test run, the snapshot was taken before the test was run and the state was reverted. So I could run this like a million times, reboot the machine, everything, and your test should just run over there and get you back the state that you had before. I delete the snapshot. I take a snapshot, I run the test, and I delete the snapshot. Actually, you can pause the VM and actually restore the state as well. The, 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 not only the snapshot in disk, but also the state. We're probably talking about creating a plugin. We're going to go to the, uh, what we call now Avocado VT, which is an extension to Avocado that does testing on the vert stack. And by, me, by vert stack, I mean QMU itself, libvert. So the same kind of thing could be done with probably overt or GlusterFS or yeah, things like that. Yeah. Is just Running any, any test. Like yeah. No, the test itself does not. In this, in this case here, in this feature here, no. 
It's just a matter. We do actually. Uh, I actually showed one of the tests in the build. Uh, in the test itself, it has the setup. It can have a teardown. I actually don't have on this one, but it actually uh, inherit all this even logic and compatibility from Python unit test test case file. Oh yeah, uh, I'll actually give you a couple of options on how to use Avocado with existing tools. Uh, one of the things that Avocado can actually run, uh, can actually do, is let's say we have the same QMU build test and it was written, it was specifically written using the Avocado API. There's no way to run uh, QMU build without it. So we can actually, let me see if I, oh, QMU build is too big, let's do QMU image. So if we import from Avocado this thing called, say that again? Oh yeah, a <laughs> good one. I wouldn't be able to because I'm running as a regular user anyway. So, so let's say if name is main, we can do main. And when you act, when you yeah. So uh, being named with Python or Python itself, let's make this executable and we can run this just like this. And it's actually going to report either success or failure. So you could still leverage all the Avocado API and not use the Avocado test runner itself and actually get things working. That's one of the options. So, um, all right, let's see what else we have. Uh, there's a bunch of interesting questions and interesting suggestions. So, okay, we have run things on the remote machine and now we're going to pause and actually take a look at Avocado VT, which is not running tests on virtual machines, but actually running tests that test the actual build stack. So, uh, on the previous weeks, we actually had uh, some kind of major releases and major announcements uh, about Avocado VT. And we actually came to the point where we actually released Avocado VT in a very, very good shape. So what I'm doing here, uh, just to speed things up, I have one RPM, which is the latest release. I'm going to install this thing. It's hopefully not going to ask for yeah, no dependencies whatsoever. I get back as a regular user, and when I run Avocado plugins, I actually get quite useful error messages saying that these two guys here, they cannot actually run. They're missing an environment. So Avocado VT, just like Vertest, it actually needs some kind of stuff to actually get started. That means a couple of Git repos downloaded, uh, uh, GOS image that's actually going to be used by default by the tests and a little bit more. So just to speed things up, I can actually cheat here. I have a bootstrap shortcut. It just copies stuff from a previous location, but we're still going to do the real thing, avocado VT bootstrap. It's just going to take a little less time. So this process should be mostly uh, automatic it, could, it would probably ask you if you want to download this image, which I copied so we wouldn't have to wait for the download. It's a 200 megabyte image. And after we have done this, then Avocado VT is ready to run. So Avocado is able to actually inspect and look at the tests on Avocado VT, the test that we used to have on Vertest. And when we do, do a list, it takes a little bit more time than not having Avocado VT because it has to go to the whole uh, vert test stuff. But here we have a whole bunch of tests that come from Avocado VT. And to Avocado, they are just tests. So we could say something like run slash bean slash two together with another test. So let's pick a test. Let's say, let's look for VT, something that ends with boot. Let's pick a boot. So I'm deciding that I want to get this one from the menu and run 
slash pin slash true, which is like a simple test and run IO GitHub auto test pmu.root with it. So what we have here, come on, let's do it fast, uh, is let me tail the avocado log. Uh, oh, I just got one already. So it was actually running the VM, uh, actually starting QMU, actually SSH into it to check if things are actually doing all right. So this is actually the same kind of test, the same brute test we used to have on the brute test repo, actually running inside Avocado all along with every most more about everything that we have demoed. So if we want say X unit out, out of this, we could simply wait because we ask only for X unit and X unit is atomic and we only have the result at the end but we can take a look here and see the test is actually running. We're SSHing there and all right, there we go. So we have X unit and we could plug this into another tool such as Jenkins or anything. So this is one of the features that you get by having uh, Avocado running the old vert tests, the current vert tests uh, and not running, uh, using run itself to do that. Uh, we have a couple of interesting command line options here. So let's suppose we want to run this with the QMU that we've built on the QMU build test. So here we have, let's pick up the debug version x86, 64. Uh, there we go. So we want to run the build test. We want to, I actually wanted only one of those windows. Anyway, so it's running there with the actual binary that we built. And we can actually, this is the latest result. No, let me go to the latest one. Latest. And HTML, result.xml, this is the human. The boot result is here. And we, if we go to the, the boot log, it's okay. It just loves Emacs, right? So we can see here that it actually used the QMU binary that we just built. Uh, and this is the command line itself. So yes, it used the QMU version that we built. So one extra feature, one of the extra features that we have in Avocado that you get here is we demoed last year a feature that actually allows you to get into the running app and actually runs, uh, be able to run the, the, a given binary that you, you have on your test uh, inside GDB. So we could do just the same thing here with the boot test. So GDB run bin and the same binary, it means that whenever the test actually runs this, it's actually be going to be stopped by uh, Avocado. It's going to take a little bit more than you probably expect. The reasons that we're using not only GDB, but GDB server, so you can actually attach to this running instance with whatever uh, plain GDB or any kind of front end that you want. And GDB server doesn't perform so speedily as plain GDB. So while that happens, it actually has to copy all the, the symbols and everything else to the other. Uh, to the other places. Let's talk a little bit more of what else Avocado has and we'll get down to GDB uh, in a short while. It's not like this huge amount of time, but it's probably like 60 seconds or so. So uh, what else Avocado has and what else Avocado does? So right now Avocado also has this project called Avocado Server. It is intended to be a consolidation central place for test results. Uh, it exposed test results through uh, HTTP uh, REST-based API. So uh, this is actually preloaded with results. It's not the results we were running, but we could do things like get me the list of jobs that will return those. If we went and said, oh, just show me a given job, it would return information on that. Just show me the tests there, or just show me the summary of the tests. So it's a REST-based interface. You could actually say, just show me a summary of the jobs and would show you that uh, you have one job, that one job that failed and two jobs that passed. And we also have the initial 
working version of a dashboard. So this information actually comes from the REST-based server. It just presents it like in a, in a better way for human beings. So we want to consolidate all kind of results there and you should be able to query it using this REST-based interface. Uh, another, another thing that Avocado actually plays really well with is, is Jenkins. Uh, we actually have a couple of instances running inside uh, the Brno office, right? Is it Brno office? Anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, machines are actually in the US, right? So uh, this, this just shows a couple of real world Avocado VT running on ARM64 and on PowerPC64 actually integrated to Jenkins. And this is not really that, I mean, it's not really that hard to get Avocado running with, uh, with Jenkins. So let's do something like really quick here. Let's create a new job. Let's call this perfect because it should be perfect. It's a freestyle project. Um, let's add a build step here. And we're just going to say Avocado, please run slash bin slash to run sleep test and run pass test. So we want everything to be perfect. It's going to take one second because of sleep test, but everything else would be perfect. We want to output X unit. This is going to be, oh yeah. This is going to be to, this is going to be saved on workspace, which is defined by Jenkins results.xml. And we also want to save the job results dear to works, works, oops. Let me see if I did not have a typo here. Workspace, okay. So this is a command that we want to run. Uh, here we could have, if we had properly set up, say Avocado VT or anything, we could just like give the list of tests here. And we actually want to read from the X unit result. So we just put result.xml here that's going to come from this place. Results, results. Oh, results, I'm sorry. So yeah. So let's save this and build now. And yes, we have a build that actually succeeded. So status, everything is nice. We ha only have one build, let's do another one. So it's running again. Okay, it took a second, everything is nice and perfect. And suppose we somehow uh, screw test, but let's just use fail test here to simulate that. So now we build it again. And yes, we start to get failures. So this is how, this is how trivial and how easy it is to actually get anything that can run inside of Avocado to actually uh, communicate with other systems such as Jenkins. So I promise you it did not take like five minutes to get here, <laughs> but uh, let's just see what happened here. So we have Avocado still running here, and it's, it tells us that the test is paused because of a debugger breakpoint. To debug your application, run this script. This script is no magic, it's just like utility. So we could take a look at it. It just runs GDB and asks GDB to run a couple of commands. And when we actually exit GDB, it tells Avocado to actually keep on going. So you could use uh, either GDB itself, your own version of GDB, your own front end, anything else. So we're just going to run this script. And when we run it, we are inside uh, QMU itself. So we could try like two step. We could try to make bad things, say set response equals dead B. Okay, so we cannot execute memory in that script, that's it. But anyway, we could do whatever we want here inside GDB and let the program actually keep on going. So here, the test is resuming and you actually get to poke inside the binary that you're running inside uh, from within an avocado session. So we could expand this a little bit. We, uh, let's talk a little bit about what avocado is probably heading. Uh, 
we are obviously looking for external contributions. So if Avocado actually looks anything like interesting to your use cases, uh, I want to stress that it's actually extendable, it's pluggable, so um, let's, let's add more features to it. We are actually um, going to work really hard in the near future on improving the virtualization support. What Avocado VT is, it is the port of Virtest to actually make use of the features that Avocado has, but we want to come up with a new API, an easier to use API, so that's probably one big uh, area that we're going to work on in the near future. Uh, integrate even more with CI tools and provisioning tools, so the cloud-based image question, uh, it's, it's definitely something we've been thinking about. Avocado server is also something we want to invest on. And there is one feature which is partially implemented, uh, the, the basic in infrastructure is there. We used to have this in, in auto test, uh, which is what we call component isolation. And after that, we could go towards what we call automated bisection. And the concept here for component isolation is that since Avocado already collects system information, it actually knows what your machine is like, what's installed. Uh, from a given point of su a success to a given point of failure, it's actually going to be able to tell you what changed in your system and what probably caused the failure. So uh, in auto test, we used to have this command line option called regression point. It would say, uh, give me the last regression point for a given test and would say, oh, this package got updated or something else. So that's where we're going. And once we have that, we can actually uh, ask a grid to actually run a bunch of tests and actually tell us to pinpoint uh, where uh, regression possibly ex uh, happened. So the last item is really, really true. You get to decide. Please join us. Please influence the future of Avocado. And that's it. If you guys have questions, uh, we have like three more minutes, so I'm not going to jump into another. Um, yeah. So first question is, how does uh, you would expect uh, Simpsons to integrate with your uh, graphical analysis system? So okay. I used to use the Simpsons panel, which is a very simple, but nevertheless custom. Mm -hmm. How those, those things actually play together, right? So like then for Windows, I wanted to add the enlightenment. For Linux, uh, I used to make the mm -hmm. use uh, more script IO and uh, in 1000. So it was not hard, uh, very it was not really complicated stuff, but still it's custom. So how would you So maybe, maybe Lucas wants to answer that. He actually wrote something we call Frankenstein mode. It's not mandatory, so but. We call the Frankenstein mode. And you can you can pick one virt test and then write a multiplexer file and use that multiplexer file to multiplex that particular virt test. If that's what you want. Yeah. And if then uh, inside the test you can access uh, a different set of parameters, uh, avocado special parameters that come from the multiplexer, and uh, you can make uh, you can make the changes in your test. It requires changes in the test in the test code. Uh, but that was the way we thought it would be interesting, you know, so, to make the so, so just to make it clear, the old Cartesian config files are still there. Okay, you can still use only Yeah, you can only, you can still use only that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That should work. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I just would like 
So you want to keep the you want to keep the image between tests. That, that's no, I just uh, 99% of the tests that I run are in control tests. So okay. Care of what's there. Okay. 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 So I think Paulo is saying that you have a local patch for your test and you want to do the same thing to Avocado. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you, could, you could use either Avocado from source tree that's supported or... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in a system... In a... Of course, we want to replace the copy functionality, the backup functionality. In a system wide, in a system wide install, you would get avocado in the Python uh, standard place, so you could just. The avocado DC, I can use a local avocado DC with a global avocado. You could, but. Uh, yeah, we will never test. Yeah. Plugins VT, so this is. It's not a package. You could patch it from here as well. So So we kind of uh, we don't have much time. I just want to say that we have a couple of resources here. One is the Avocado website, which is this one. Um, we also have a quite extensive documentation. It is on Read the Docs. You guys feel free to actually browse through it. So everything from getting started to writing simple tests to having any kind of outputs uh, come out of Avocado using the multiplexer, everything should be documented there. Uh, we don't have time to get in, in, into each one of them, of course, but please go there. And we also have a copper repo with ready to use packages, the same ones that I'm using on copper.fedoraproject.com, coppers, LMR, all the rest. Uh, come on, slides. The slides should show up in the full screen. They're not. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, thank you for your presence.